Welcome back to Life Off-Road. Today we're hitting some local tracks to the north of Melbourne. We're taking the not so easy route as we search for a waterfall we've been trying to reach for over a year. So come along for the ride as we push deeper into the wild forests of King Lake West. Today we're out in King Lake West, into an area that I haven't been before, and it's fabulous. Oh, the scenery is just awesome. We love driving up here, and the weather is just perfect for us today. Brought young Tristan along. Tristan does some work at Piranha. Hasn't been four-wheel driving before, so it's great to come along with experienced crew, learn about four-wheel driving, learn about the industry we operate in. We're expecting some slippery tracks. Maybe a little bit more mud and some deep-rated tracks. We've got to adjust how we drive and looking forward to handling the track. Guys, we've got an awesome day planned in the King Lake West area. We're heading into the Mount Robertson State Forest. I'm a passenger today, so make sure you've got a spare seat. I'll be jumping in with all of you at one stage or another. So looking forward to spending some time with each of you. We're going down, descending into the gully to Kaiser Creek. The first section of the track is hugely rutted. Stick to the ruts, depending on how slippery it is. We'll get to the bottom, across the creek and up the other side. Sounds nice and easy. Yeah, sounds fun. <laughs> Just We've got our tyre pressures down, down. let's get into it. Morning Brian and Jackie, thanks for the lift. You're welcome. You're welcome Simon. Oh, oh geez. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a fun day. Peter, we've got you back for another day. Yeah, very excited to be out again, Simon. It's fantastic. What a beautiful day, too. I'm sorry I couldn't bring the new D-Max, but got the old trusty Nissan back, so we'll uh, have a bit of fun. Well, I promised you a little bit of mud. We've found Ooh. some, so you're going to get it dirty. Nice little hill climb here, Grant. It'll be interesting to hear what Tristan thinks of that. Yeah, no, Tristan says this shouldn't be a problem at all. Yeah. But I can see a 360 vehicle's diff has scraped all the way up there, so it mm, could be interesting. I can't handle at the moment, mate. So we went down, really, really big ruts. Look really scary. Simon's like, no, nah, you'll be right. In the ruts, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> They're still pretty scary. Like when you're going straight down, I wouldn't be doing it if we didn't have Simon in the car. Geez, they are ruts. Holy moly. <laughs> We'll do a bead on a tyre. I shouldn't probably speak too soon, should I? Oh. Initially, I straddled them, but down the bottom here, you had to, until you dropped into it, so I did. There was one section where we turned left and you could not see. There we go, I hope this is okay, and you just turned and dropped in. dropped down to a crossing over the creek, but even still there was some pretty gnarly stuff on the left-hand side as we went down, but good fun. <laughs> so do you find that the manual transmissions are getting hot on hill climbs? It's more the extra load carrying accessories. They do long trips. Their gear sticks, they, they tell us their gear sticks are getting really hot. We just see too many manual gearboxes overheating. Gear sticks getting hot on long trips. First thing to check is obviously the airflow, but with all the accessories, bull bars and bash plates and winches is affecting the airflow through the vehicle. The gearbox is right at the back and doesn't get enough cooling. So Brian's designed a new cooler, which is going to cool the gearbox. And if you hook a gauge up to it, it'll actually tell you the temp. So you never have a worry of it overheating. So not only will it keep the gearbox cool, but it'll increase the oil flow by 30%. So we're gonna apply it to our extreme gearboxes to begin with, and then we'll start rolling it out to other Land Cruiser gearboxes. Well, we came up, I thought we had a lack of power, but it just really wet mud basically, and they fill all the treads up, and so we had three goes at it. We just literally slid 90 degrees. 
Jesus Christ, where are we going? I know. No. Hang on a sec. Hang on a sec. Oh. With the big cruiser wedged sideways, getting a set of eyes outside was the only way forward. Realigned and ready to catch up to the convoy, we headed off in search of the next challenge, which would prove to be far tougher than any of us expected. Drives like a brick. Doesn't feel like a brick. Oh. You right? Yeah. Oh. It's a deep one, guys. Grant, how's your passenger going? So far, so good. I think he's a bit horrified by my driving, but uh, so far, no damage on the vehicle. So, what do you reckon, Tristan? How's the driving going? Uh, it could be better. Fantastic bog hole here, but we are definitely not going to tackle this one. Too deep, too long, too disastrous. And for the vehicles we've got, that is not the place we want to be spending our afternoon. We're going to pick the side track here, which is challenging enough on its own. Holy moly. But with a little bit of guidance, we should be able to get through. Around the side? Yeah. That looks more dangerous. I don't feel like swimming right now, so I'm going to go the chicken track. The chicken track? Yeah. Is... Have you measured it? Yeah, they've got the stick out. Oh, have they? Okay, so they've got the stick out. Yeah. Not a problem. All right, 360, your first up, let's yep. go. <laughs> oh my God. And now we can see our hill climb. Oh my goodness. <laughs> One way in, one way out. The bog hole on the right was just obviously far too deep. So having a good spotter with Simon to get it right, and um, we got through fine, unscathed. Just letting our tyres down a bit more because we've just taken a quick uh, squeeze of the hill climb ahead of us and it looks like it's just going to be sliding all the way up. Let's do that again. Yeah, look at, look at oh my goodness, have a look at that. This is the problem when you're running low pressures and in these deep trenches, these ruts, just pushing it a little bit harder and we didn't have to push it too hard to cause some dramas. This is one tricky hill climb. Time to get serious. Gotta get some big boy winching. Look at those muscles, go Simon. So it saves him a trip to the gym. Oh. <laughs> we'll keep him fit yeah, today. The gloves that we have here fit very neatly on the hands. Our gloves allow you to manoeuvre around with your shackles, your other equipment. They're not big, they're not bulky. It makes it easy to work with. If we can get a direct line to winch, it's a clean winch. In most cases when we're out here, it's a tree. We don't go wrecking trees. We've got the tree trunk protector around it. We use the shackle so that it brings the eyes of the tree trunk protector together. We're not actually hooking onto the eyes so that there's no direct pull by the winch hook onto the eyes. Next thing we do is we put cable damper on and of course before we winch, whoever's in operation of the winch will yell out. Clear! Winching! Uh, 
two tyres. Damn. Oh my God. After watching Brian get hung up on the track, took a walk, had a good look, and tried to work out a different line. So we had to actually find another track, dug a little section out on the side just to get the wheels out of the ruts. What do you reckon we'll make it? I'm praying that we do. <laughs> I'm honestly praying. I don't want to be stuck up there in the middle. If he instinctively gets to about just on that bend there, you've got these tree roots up here that can actually give him some traction. Well, don't worry about your paint you got to watch this spot down. Took it easy, followed his instructions. You can see exactly where the wheels are. Yeah, we can't. Great drive. All right, Pete, your turn. Well, this is quite curly. I had some instruction from Simon going up. And to be honest, that was really the best way to do it. it feels wrong to go right. That's what Simon's saying to do. Oh, I turned as soon as you said. The problem there was when he dropped in that angle, it's meant that he had loss of traction. Not much choice, we'll back it up. There's not enough vision to pick the lines exactly where you need to go, and it was very delicate. So we had to take him back, realign that rear end, get it up on top of the rut, keep all four wheels square. Well done. Didn't have to get the winch out. That's disappointing. Basically, the three IFS cars been a little bit more, I suppose, conservative. It was the right approach but at the end of the day. But you've got to say thank God that we all didn't get stuck. Another one of us got stuck, it would have been a long day. That was definitely a lot easier than winching. We've now got all the cars to the top. Now got to check on Brian and head for lunch. So, once we get to the top, we discovered we didn't just do one, we did two. And we ripped the valves out of both wheels. So then we discovered that none of the tyre repair kits actually had valves in them. Yep, that's not quite repairable. Got it? Yep. In the end, we used Grant's spare tyre and took the tubeless valve out of that. We needed some logs to prop up the tyre, carried it all the way to where we were doing the repair, and it was full of bullets. I got bitten all on my arm, my sides, a bit of spray on them, and uh, that's all settled down. But word of caution, next time you pick up logs, firewood, whatever, just check for bullet nests. They actually drove with the Colorado onto the tyre so that they could break the bead and then they had to get the valve out. So that we actually give us a working valve to see we can get it to air up. One of the key things when you're setting up four-wheel drive is to make sure you've got good accessory power. Very important that you separate your main battery from your auxiliary battery so that when you run your accessories and the vehicle's not moving, that don't run down your main battery. This vehicle set up, it's got three batteries in it. To manage that, you've got to have battery management systems. In the front of this vehicle, we're running the Piranha DB140S, which can handle 140 amps. This would be our most popular controller, very widely used and very versatile. Now, the great thing about it is that it's Australian made, and we've got another one in the back here managing a second battery that runs like all the accessories. Putting a flammable material inside the tyre, we're going to fill it up. You know how they light a fire and it goes boom? getting the wet material in on the side and just trying to block the air leak just to try and get it filled up with enough air so that it would finally pop on the rim. We tried everything, but then in the end I had to jump to try and break the bead. We got there because we had been toiling for a couple of hours and we had all these different ideas that weren't paying off. Everyone's up there and everyone pulls in and helps. Between all of us, we had a lot of different ideas as to how to find a solution. Some worked, some didn't. 
With both tyres finally repaired, it was time for a quick lunch. It's really nice to relax and soak it in. Like, this is really a hard day at the office today. It's just absolutely awesome weather. Nice peaceful spot, long, fast, windy tracks, a lot of mud holes, splash holes. Nothing too deep, quite firm base. We had a little bit of a play with the water splashing. Just a lovely, clear, fresh day. It looked like there was water in there. It was really for a bit of fun. We were never going to get stuck. I think you're tricky. Didn't get into any trouble. Nice, easy paced afternoon cruising. First one's a bit deeper, the second one's a bit shallow. Yes, we hammered through them, we got a bit of a wave effect, splashed a bit of water around a good part of the day. The seal was pretty good. I took my time, I picked the right lines, and I got through pretty easy. Now here you've got some new recovery points. Oh yeah, we're doing new recovery points all the time. So what's going to be a running change is to do a soft shackle compatibility, if you like. When we're doing recovery tow points, we're always trying to improve. There's always better ways to do something. For example, the RPPA T04 tow point, which is a commonly fitted to GU patrols or 80 and 100 series Land Cruisers. There's a newer version that we've done here. It's the RPP AT05. It's thicker, stronger, it tucks up neater. This extra plate here means it'll do GQs as well. The new ones that we're doing is radiusing this edge a little bit to give it a softer edge. It is a softer edge for the soft shackle and makes it work better and nicer. Gotcha. 360 gearbox has managed to get the one of the camera crew pretty good. <laughs> Simon said, make a splash. So we made a splash. So Brian made a splash. I didn't realise he was going to get that soaked, but no, yeah, nice. poor Ben, he got a bit covered, got a bit wet. Yeah, so sorry about that, Ben. Here he comes. It's all right, Jackie. It was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> Some of them took a bit of a gamble, but just knowing the terrain around here, there weren't too many deep bog holes, so it wasn't too risky. We were at the rear all the time, so we had a chance to watch the others go through, so we, Brian was really confident and just gunned it through every puddle because he had seen the cars before us. It wasn't deep. It's good to see this forest has regenerated after the fires. Been a horrific time for the people up here and it's good to see it's all come back to life. It's a great day. We got to do different things. We got challenged. A lot of people go out forward driving for the challenge and to experience those different things. And uh, we got a bit of that today. It's been a great day out. Been very fortunate with the weather and we're really blessed to get out of Melbourne and be this close. It's good fun to see the people again. It's been great to come back out and I really enjoy myself on these days. Great way to finish the day off. You had to wait for me though, so I was a bit slow. Beautiful waterfall across the valley, beautiful and green, plenty of water coming out of the waterfall. It's a nice pleasant walk down there, it's not overtaxing. You get a good view from the, the viewing platform, a good end of the day.